It yeah. says it's level three, ten percent OC. Okay. It's got 1.33 TC. Oh, here it is, two million. Okay, so it's it's a little it's a little less strong than Fox Labs then. Two yeah. million Scoville heat units is what they're yeah, saying. Hot enough. Check out Fox Labs. It's a great company. The FBI uses it. I've always carried that stuff and make a great product. Yeah. Well, Mission First sponsors me, so. <laughs> well, then I guess that's what you're using. <laughs> yeah. Got one of these for my ass, too. One of the little mini batons. I've never seen. I got a traditional collapsible baton from them, just like their standard. Um, I got a collapsible baton from a German company that's actually, instead of, you know, the ass, you have to, like, pound it in the ground to collapse it. Um, this one's got a button on the back end. This one does, too. Oh, uh, they, they got one with the button in. Yeah. You just pop yeah. it out. And then, yeah, can't carry this concealed in Ohio. Oh, you can't? It's a deadly weapon. So you can't carry a gun concealed? You can carry a gun if you have a concealed handgun license. Tennessee, Hand July 1st, the um, constitutional carry goes into effect. In Tennessee? Mm -hmm. It's coming to Ohio. I give it five years. You'll see it. I think it'll take that long? Yeah, I do. I was always kind of behind the curve a little bit. We just passed Stand Your Ground, took effect in April. Um, but we're extremely conservative at the state level. I mean, Ohio went for Trump by six points. It's a very conservative state level government. So it'll happen. It's going to take some time. Our governor's in long pull, though. So turn you up a little bit there. All right, we're ready to go. Let's do it. Ready to do this? All right, all right, all right, lead heads. We are back with the 400th episode of the Talking Lead podcast. Woohoo! <laughs> 400 episodes going on 10 years, bringing you the Lead Head Brigade, educating the uneducated since 2012. Talking Lead. That's us. And we've got some good education this episode. I thought this would be a good time to uh, get updated on the latest and all the the gun law proposals that are going around and at the top of everybody's discussions right now. So I thought we'd just go ahead and get an expert on here. And we're going to welcome back our good buddy Derek DeBross with Munitions Law Group. Derek, welcome back. I appreciate it, Marty. Thanks for having me. Enjoy being on your show. and. I just enjoy looking at all your toys you have behind you. <laughs> I enjoy playing with all my toys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I can't find the time uh, these yeah. days. But, you know, hopefully yeah. we get to keep our toys. And <laughs> that's what we've got you on today is maybe to help maybe calm some nerves a little bit, give some people some fuel on how they can combat this, what they need to do. Uh, but, but the main thing is education. Let's educate them on these proposed gun laws. Uh, you know, the top one being the the braces. The ATF has set out that new uh, guideline policy. Uh, they're basically trying to redefine what a rifle is, too. So we're going to talk about that. California uh, had another milestone in California. The um, uh, Judge Benitez. Uh, Roger Benitez yeah, yeah. Uh, has has come through again, and he's ruled that uh, their gun gun ban is unconstitutional there. I mean, he's done some other things in the past with the the magazines, and I mean, we see where that's that's led. They they still uh, can't have those yet because they put a stay on that ruling, and they're you know they're arguing it, they're debating it, and that's the same thing that they've done with this. Uh, so maybe you can you can educate us on that when we start talking about that. Also, is is why he would allow that to begin with? Is you know if, if he's ruling that it's unconstitutional, then to me it sounds like it should be unconstitutional and they should just lay the law down. But we're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, the uh, the appointee to the ATF, a David Chipman. Yeah. Douche. I call him. <laughs> um. We'll talk about that a little bit, and then we'll touch on some other things, too. Our last episode, there were some things going on in New York. Uh, so if we've got updates on that, we'll talk about that. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, just wanted to get everybody, uh, get their summer under control so they know which direction to head. 
and um, how to stay in the fight. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and we're able to do this for 10 years, 400 episodes through the sponsors of the Talking Lab podcast. So make sure you go and show all our sponsors some love. And you do that by going and buying their products and letting them know that you heard about them here on Talking Lead. Uh, Mission First Tactical. They've got a slew of different products at Mission First Tactical. Uh, you've seen me pimp out their what they call dump trays. Uh, so, you know, with your dump, dumping your pockets out at the end of the night on your nightstand, you put this stuff on there. But I've been using these as armorer's trays. So I've been putting my parts in there, my bolt carriers and pins and greasy, nasty parts. And uh, it cleans up really well. So uh, they're very durable, ink injected with the logos that they have on there. And they've got a variety of different logos that you can get. Uh, if you want our logos, I think they've got like the standard logo. These are some custom ones that I had done. Um, but if you want our our logos, just let them know that you want the Talking Lead logos on there. They've got them. They can put them on there. If you want the Lead Head Brigade, you want our standard custom logo they can do all that check them out mission first tactical um derek and i were talking a little bit before we were talking about um pepper spray and mission first tactical has uh, pepper spray as well they've got several different delivery methods that you can uh, can get these in different sizes different shapes for different purposes uh, and this one is a what we say is two million scovilles i believe that's right yeah that's what you looked up yeah, the rapid strike spray uh, right here. It's just real easy, flips up, hit the button. And what's uh, good about these two is they've got practice ones too. So if you're new to the uh, pepper spray world, you can get their practice ones where they just have water in them. Uh, and then you can practice so you can get a feel of how it's going to um, interact with your environment. So windy environments, you can practice in that so you'll know not to be standing uh, downwind. <laughs> when you're spraying somebody um but check those out mission first tactical and then of course their furniture what they're famous for are their holsters and their uh, ar furniture and you can see several of my guns back here have their furniture their butt stocks their hand guards uh this is one of the butt stocks here itself it's their minimalist it's an aluminum minimalist and what you guys are normally used to are their um the the plastic one so they're not plastic what do you call that the uh, whatever this stuff this strong material polymer polymer thank you it starts with a p so polymer uh, but this is an aluminum one so uh you get that nice metal feel but it's it's light it's super lightweight it's as light uh if not lighter than their polymer uh, butt stocks and i've really been enjoying this one i put it on that 762 by 39 ar build that i did that brian keeney hates so much that uh, he cussed me out over but <laughs> uh really enjoy that so if you're uh, into home builds or you just want to change the look of your ar check them out missionfirsttactical.com and you use the code leadhead and you're gonna get 20 percent off uh, but make sure you're using those codes because that's how they know that you've been hearing about us or hear about them on the uh, the show. And of course, if you're getting our logo stuff, they're going to know that too. Mission First Tactical. Uh, and we were talking a little bit off air too about the NRA coming in September mm -hmm. to Houston. We're looking forward to that. And Caltech has made it possible for us to be there. We're going to be at Caltech's booth. They're going to be the official lead quarters of the 2021 NRA in Houston. So we're looking forward to that. And I've mentioned in on a couple other episodes, probably going to get some uh, custom dump trays and shirts and things like that made for you leadheads that are going to attend, come by the booth, and it's first come, first serve on those. Um, but it's going to be a good time. Really looking forward to uh, to hanging out with the guys, Chad and Matt, and uh, the gang there at Caltech. Check them out, caltechweapons.com. And, of course, all these people have the social meads which I know you leadheads uh, are well aware, but go and show them some love, like their posts, let them know that you're a leadhead, let them know you're hearing about them on the podcast, and uh, hopefully they'll uh, they'll want to sign up again for another run with us. Seal one. 
Um, I, did you get some of this? I think I sent your address to our buddy over at Seal mm -hmm. One. I don't think I got any of that. Okay, we're gonna we'll fix that. Uh, Seal One is the complete complete gun care product. It's the CLP, clean lubes protects uh, everything you need in one product. And they've got several different delivery methods for their product as well. They've got a paste, they've got a liquid, they've got an aerosol, uh, and they've got pre-soaked wipes uh, that you can use. And they've got this cool little complete care kit right here. It's got the um, the liquid, the paste, and they got a nice brush. And they got the pre-soaked wipes in there. Uh, Seal one dot net. And you use the code LEADHEAD, and you're going to get 25% off at Seal One on any of their products there. So check them out at Seal One. And we'll talk about some of our other sponsors uh, later on in the show here. Uh, we've, got, we've got a lot to talk about, and I want to jump into it on this episode with Derek. Uh, Derek is an attorney, and he's based out of Ohio, and they kind of they have a niche in the market where they deal with specific gun laws and issues and people having trouble with, uh, I, I guess, the law. Law don't go around here, law dog. <laughs> <laughs> not, not where Derek is concerned. And your nickname is The Gun Lawyer, is that right? Yeah, I've been called that, called that amongst other things. Um, <laughs> especially I've been in the Army, I had all kinds of nicknames. What was one of your nicknames in the Army? <laughs> uh, Rooster. The family nickname is Debo, D E B O. People can't pronounce my last name. So my grandfather had that nickname. I got passed down over the generations. Uh, Carrot Top, you know, the typical redhead thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, you were, we talked about this the last episode, your former military. You're in the Army? Yeah, I served uh, six years in the Ohio Army National Guard with a tour of duty in Iraq. Very cool. And Flag Day was earlier this week. Uh, was it Monday, I believe? I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I didn't know it was Flag Day this week. I had no idea. Yeah, Flag Day. And I guess it's just to honor the birthday of our flag is really what it recognizes. Let's just look it up real quick because, I mean, I got, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that I don't really know. So in the is United States... I live in a more liberal area of Columbus, and I think I'm the only one on my block that flies an American flag. I mean, there's plenty of other flags, uh, which like I won't name. Like flags but, and stuff like that? Plenty of other flags. I'll leave it at that. But uh, okay. not American flags, uh, which is unfortunate. I remember I was in boot camp when 9-11 ha happened, and I came home, and everybody had a flag flying. I mean, it was just crazy. And it was interesting to experience that because I was kind of in this little bubble in boot camp. And then I come back, and it's a different world. But that's all gone away now, you know, 10 years later. Yeah. So in the United States, Flag Day is celebrated on June 14th. It commemorates the adoption of the flag of the United States on June 14th, 1777. By resolution of the Second Continental Congress, the flag resolution passed on June 14th, 1777, stated... Resolve that the flag of the 13 United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white, in a blue field, representing a new constellation. Uh, and then it goes on and tells more about that. So basically, that's, that's what Flag Day is. So every mm -hmm. June 14th, uh, since 1777. Hmm. I had no idea. So how many years does that make our flag? Can you do quick math? No, I'm a lawyer. Uh, that's why I got a calculator right here. Let's uh, <laughs> 2021 minus 1777. 244. Hmm. 244 years young. And speaking of birthdays, oh, I, believe, I believe somebody on this this show tonight has a birthday. Is that you? Right? Is it you? Uh, no, no, sir. It's you. Yeah, it's my. I'm, I'm almost. I'm almost over the hill. What better way to celebrate your birthday than to do the Talking Lead podcast? We should have had you on the last episode because that was 399, yeah. and you're 39, right? Yeah, 39. Uh, you know, yesterday was the Army's birthday, June 14th. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 And I share a birthday. Everybody should know. I think everybody knows who they share a birthday with. I think I share a birthday with Ice T or Ice Cube or something. <laughs> one of the um, Ices. <laughs> one of the Ices. The guy that was in that old movie from the 90s involving heroin. I can't remember the name of that show. Coolio? Um, maybe it was Coolio. I can't remember. Let me look it up here. Day, June 15th. See here. So the right. Army's birthday is the same day as Flag Day. Ice Cube. I share, I share a birthday with Ice Cube. Uh, Courtney Cox. Uh, I think the Friends. Chinese Prime Minister has a birthday with me. Neil Patrick Harris, Helen Hunt. The- Leah Ramini, famous Scientologist. In- Jim Yeah. I love me some Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't remember him from Doogie Howser. Well, I remember that's the only thing I remember him from. I didn't watch any of his new stuff. I remember from Doogie Howser. I never watched Doogie Howser, but I always knew him from that. And then, yeah. um, what was that? Harold and Kumar? Yeah. Was he in that? Yes, he's great. I don't remember that. Dude, remember you, that gotta, you gotta huh. watch Harold and Kumar and Neil Patrick Harris. Huh. Best yeah. cameo scene ever. Yeah. Nobody else is really famous that I would want to mention. But, yeah, today's my birthday. I'm 39 years old. I've got a, a year left of being young. So let heads go and wish Derek a happy birthday. You can go to his social meds. What's your um, what's your handle on the Instagrams? Uh, I think it's just Munitions Group. I haven't I – have I have somebody else that manages it for me, but I think it's just uh, Munitions Group. Uh, we're more active on YouTube. Uh, we have a pretty prolific page there and pretty fairly active on Facebook. I haven't been on that in a while. I've been so busy with everything, but um, I don't do Twitter, just so you guys know. Not, yeah. not a Twitter fan. Yeah, not either. I do stuff. Whenever I post to Instagram, it'll automatically post to Twitter. Right. Yeah. So I don't really, I have no interaction with Twitter. Yeah. But it is Munitions Group. That's M U N T I. M U T I O N S G R O U P. Right. right. Uh, gun lawyer. You could also type that in and he comes. It, comes. it may come up. I think there's another gun lawyer out west that uses that handle for Instagram. I can't remember. Um, Instagram is funny for lawyers, though, right? Because you can't really take a picture of the wall. It's very, it's kind of diff, it's difficult sometimes. Well, you can. Uh, you know, it's just a book. <laughs> I guess I could. We try to make it interesting, but who wants to follow a lawyer on Instagram? It, it's difficult, but. We, we do have a presence there. It's just, it's relatively small, but uh, YouTube is really where we have most of our social media and, and Facebook. It's just, it was fairly prolific as well. And, and then on YouTube, it's munitions law group, just munitions group, just munitions, munitions group. group. Okay. Yeah. And they've yeah. got a star for a logo. So yeah. Star. It's like black. The, Cow- the Dallas Cowboys or. Our well, I was going to say that, but I didn't, I didn't. I don't know if that would offend you or not. Not the third army. Who who uses the star of the army? I can't remember. Hey, oh, it's your military star with a circle around it. Yeah, you check it out. We like it. I like the brand. Yeah, the army. The on the Jeeps. You see Yeah, that? exactly. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you is that where it came from? Uh, okay. our graphic designer came up with it. You know, we gave him ideas. This is something a little bit military, but not too military. And he came up with it and he does an amazing job and we stuck with it. So very cool. I'm going to turn that off. So I told you I've got company coming in this week. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Um, so my buddy, uh, Chris Brooks from Buck Knives, is going to be in town. And he's in town for business. I can't say what. And uh, and then our buddy, Bill Doe, Bill Doe Teabaggins, <laughs> <laughs> as they know him on the show. Uh, he's with the uh, Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association. Uh, he's been on show several times. You let heads know Bill. You know Chris. They've both been on. Uh, and, I mean, there's no telling what we're going to do. They're they're coming down. We're going to hang out. We might do a show. might record a show. Uh, but I'm definitely going to take them to Royal Range in Nashville. It's a five-star range there in Nashville. If you've never been, Derek, mm-hmm. next time you come down, I'll take you. It's a country club. That's exactly what it is. Uh, it's it's really nice. They've got uh, some of the nicest indoor shooting that you uh, you will ever do, uh, and the most knowledgeable staff that you'll ever run into. Art does a really good job uh, running that place. He's turned it around. I think it's been under like three or four different owners, and then when Art took it over, uh, he really turned it into something. I'm looking at pictures of it now. 
if you're looking There's to get a- married, if you want to do a bachelor party or a bachelorette party, great place to go have one of those. Yeah, I see that's on their website. Um, that's it's an old movie theater. It's an old movie theater they converted into <laughs> into huh. a good retail and, and range. It's it's super nice. There's a nice country club in Central Ohio called Blackwing Shooting Center. That's super nice. It's kind of like this that I like going to as well. Yeah. So you can shoot full auto there, anything, all the way up to 50 BMGs. They've got the the Barretts there that you can whale away on if you want to pop off like 10 bucks a round or something. <laughs> Go right ahead. They have quite a few lanes, it looks like, too. They do. They've got a lot. I don't know how many they've got, but they've got uh, quite a few. Do first rate training there they have um uh, well-known international national known trainers that come in and hold classes there we've done some of our classes there some collaborations um with some of the the nation's top trainers that looks really nice i definitely have to check that out oh yeah definitely we'll uh, we'll take you there so we'll probably hit that i'll take because neither one of them have been there so i'll probably take them there uh take them to some of the uh the restaurants and of course uh, other, another personality that's on the show quite a bit. We call him Drew. He works with Century Arms. Drew's in the area, so we'll probably go out with Drew and uh, go get some some good wings and and barbecue somewhere. It's gonna be He's a good time. Jack Daniels. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Jack Daniels. I'm probably gonna get a lot of haters for that, but I'm not a whiskey fan. I much prefer Kentucky bourbon. You know that's why there's more than one. <laughs> It's funny. I really don't like Jack Daniels. That one brand. I love Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels is everybody great. I've ever met who's from Tennessee loves Jack Daniels. Well, that's not the case. Not everybody does. So everybody I've met from Nashville or from Tennessee loves Jack Daniels. Not a, I have a friend who's actually part of their their club. I guess you can get invited it's to this club. club. Yeah, and you own like a square inch of land. You get a D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course you are. <laughs> It was my dad. My dad was a member, and then when he passed away, I inherited his okay uh, one square inch of <laughs> yeah of land or whatever it is. I think there's an actual deed, isn't it? Isn't they actually give you a deed? You know what? There is. If you'll wait one second, I'll go get it and I'll show it sure, to I'll you. I'll see it. I got it right here. Yeah, hold on. Keep talking to the leadhead. <laughs> I don't think they want to hear me talk. I usually get paid to talk. All right, so that makes me mad. It's not where I thought it was. Well, just make sure you edit out this because I just stared at the screen for five minutes. Oh, maybe it's over here. Here it is. Of course. Just sit on the floor. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Why is it on the floor in an envelope? Amongst, amongst all the other crap. I inherited this from my father. Here it's on the floor. <laughs> It's in a nice organized spot, though. So this this is the original uh, package that it came in, too. Oh, wow. That's probably worth something, just the packaging. Yeah, so it says Tennessee Squire. Got to put my damn glasses on. Shit. Getting old sucks, Derek. Not 39 anymore, are you? <laughs> no. Far from it. All right. Moore County. That's the county. Uh, that uh, mm-hmm. was in Lynchburg, Pop 399, Tennessee. Uh, and then it's got his old address on there. First class mail, 1971. Oh, God. That's the year I was born. <laughs> That's why he was drinking so much back then. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was, and I was the youngest. So, yeah. So this is 50 years old. Jeez. It says July. I was born in February. Let's take it out. So there's. Oh, that's cool. That is pretty neat. Nice, heavy, thick cardboard. Uh, what deed. do you actual deed? Do you get like? Uh, do you get to do barrel tastings, or what do you get for that? I have no idea. I bet you get barrel tastings or you get to buy certain types of uh, select barrels or something. I'm There's guessing. some sort of privilege, yeah. Uh, but it says, Tennessee Squire, it is hereby warranted that the above title be rightfully awarded to my dad. Uh, mm-hmm. That said part of your parties, 
of the first part for in consideration said party of the second <laughs> parts about <laughs> generally you know what you interpret all this for us uh express loyalty to and devotion for jack daniels charcoal mellowed whiskey and other valuable considerations rendered by the said party of the second part the receipt of which is hereby acknowledged does by these uh, presence grant convey and confirm unto the said party of the second part the above title and rights of land pertaining to said title uh, mm. and then it's got uh d e motlow reagan something i don't know can't read that name so i did understand that i understood all that mm. so it says the following real estate situated in the county of moore uh, and more particularly plot, blah, blah, blah. So it's got a plot number. Mm -hmm. Dated June 1st, 1955. Wow. Uh, and being part of the land conveyed in deed book is the book and page. Near the hollow, the site still used for charcoal, melony, Tennessee whiskey, drop by drop. To having to hold the same together with all rights and the pertinences to the same belonging unto said party and to the heirs and assigns of such party forever. Yeah, perpetual. Yeah. Uh, and D.E. Motlow, Jack Daniel Distillery. So I guess D.E. Motlow was the... President. Yeah, back in those days. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that, that reads like a real deed. There was consideration, which was, you know, him drinking the whiskey or whatever it said in exchange for the land. Yeah. Interesting. That's pretty neat. That's that's a piece of family history right there. Oh wait, there's something else. Let's see what this is. This is my golden ticket. It says I own Jack Daniels. <laughs> my wife for my birthday, I got my present today. I got a real copper flask. Oh sweet. Made of real copper, yeah. It's pretty neat. Nice. Yeah, so this is another piece of documentation. Can that's you see that? Cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's that's neat. That's like really hand. That's typed. Oh, yeah, that's typewriter. typewriter. Yeah. This is the oldest registered distillery in the USA. Established 1866, Jack Daniel Distillery. Lim Motlow Prop Incorporated Distillers and Bottlers of the famous Jack Daniels Whiskey. It's got my dad's name on there. It says, Dear Mr. Holder, Mr. John J. Ash has asked that we add you to our Tennessee Squire Association. Mm -hmm. We are delighted. <laughs> this little organization was formed several years ago and is made up of prominent people in business, the professions, entertainment, etc., who have been friends of our distillery and have enjoyed our product. Enclosed are your official credentials, making you a full-fledged Tennessee Squire. There's no obligation whatsoever on your part, nor any attempt made by our company to use the good names of our squires in any way. It is just our feeling that too little time is spent in this day and age enjoying the friendship of others. Ain't that hmm. the truth? The Tennessee Squire Association is our small attempt to speak up. Mr. Holder, should you be traveling through Lynchburg, do drop by and see us. We would consider it a privilege to show you through our distillery. Sincerely, Winston E. Smith, president. Huh. I wonder how many people remember. Winston E. Smith? No, I wonder how many members there are of the squad. Oh, how many members? Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's probably some sort of a... It's got a be a and there's their phone. I wonder if their phone number is still good. No email address. <laughs> in that day and age right in the 1970s 1970 with july night so february march april may june so i was like just a little over four months old so get this i just looked it up to become a squire you gotta love jack daniels and you have to be nominated by a current squire who this is interesting can only nominate one person in their entire lifetime oh wow that's cool so that gentleman who recommended your father, that was his only re his only referral. It's the only one he ever got. I wonder who your father recommended. I don't know. Or if they have that you on. You should find out. You should write them and see if they know. 
Hell, I'll just drive down there. It's just down the road yeah. for me. Yeah, hey, do that. See if they know. You'll meet the guy or person or whoever. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think my buddy Andrew, I was talking about him earlier. Drew, I think Drew's a squire also. Huh. I'll have to check. Uh, but, yeah, I like well, being who a you, Who are you uh, going to recommend? You got to recommend me. Well, <laughs> hey, you but don't like Jack Daniels, though. I don't like Jack Daniels, so I fail. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go, Leadheads. I am auctioning off my uh, nomination to the Tennessee Squires Club to the highest bidder. <laughs> That's interesting. I didn't know that. I think I still think it's fascinating the history behind it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have to do some more research. Um, maybe I'll do an episode on it. Uh, one episode. You should. Yeah. Um, so there we go. A little uh, Jack Daniels history. So <laughs> if you don't like Jack Daniels, fast forward past that part. <laughs> But no, I do. I, I I really like Jack Daniels. Um, it's not like my, you know, I'm not a snob and won't drink anything else. I mean, I'll definitely try other things sure. too. But it's just kind of my go-to. Like if I go to a place I've never been and I just don't want to look at their chefs, Jack Daniels. Yeah. You know? So for me, it's Woodford Reserve. It's just okay. a smooth drinking bourbon. Eat, you mix it. You can drink it straight. Yeah. I like a lot of other bourbons. Pappy's great if you can afford it. Um, there's a lot better, I think, bourbons than happy and a lot cheaper um my my friend is in the barrel tastings and he drives down to kentucky all the time and does all that stuff so very cool i don't need another expensive hobby <laughs> alcohol can get expensive no doubt it can get unhealthy too <laughs> yeah but getting a handle on the law you know that's where it's at yeah it's interesting alcohol and lawyers i always found it interesting we have a serious problem with alcoholism and drug addiction in our profession i think it's number two in the country might be number one i mean the attorney next door to me years ago died of a heroin overdose it's a real problem it's yeah. such a problem the industry actually has an organization to help lawyers who are alcoholics and drug addicts and uh what's fascinating though is that they recognize a serious problem from day one in law school what do they have at all the events alcohol right. right it's part of the culture but it's also a problem so i don't know why my law school is a christian law school we never had alcohol but every other law school every event there's alcohol what's number one real estate realtors i don't know um i honestly don't know i know suicide is dentist from what i can recall and attorneys are up there attorneys are also up there on the list of most sociopathic i think church pastors are number one. Oh my gosh <laughs> it was not surprising Politicians yeah. are up there, yeah. Yeah, they got to be way up there. They have to, like, set the bar. Yeah. I don't know about the podcast hosts where they fall, but I'm sure it's well, not that high. <laughs> well, I I haven't, uh, as far as I know, I don't have, of course, alcoholics don't know, do they? <laughs> yeah, no clue. <laughs> but I do enjoy drinking during my podcast. So. <laughs> a big glass of Jack Daniels. Um, Actually, this is... um rum this oh it really is alcohol okay <laughs> yeah oh yeah 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 so Larry, this was actually an intervention i'd like you to meet your family and we'd like to talk about how your behavior has been affecting us in the following the way. listeners are going to get in touch with me and uh talk me down oh <laughs> uh, with bill and chris coming in oh uh, this isn't the time for me to <laughs> stop it's, thinking. it's time for you just to punch that lever and get it going <clears throat> i'm trying to kick start it knowing they're coming in yeah I hadn't had a drink in months. <laughs> Damn, Bill. No, it's going to be a good time. So um, we want to talk law, Derek. All right. We want we want to get an understanding of, of what the government is trying to, to do through the ATF right now. How they're using ATF as their tool to get uh, new gun laws and bans and regulations mm -hmm. passed and they're Biden's kicking us off here with this this uh, ATF's redefinition or redefining the pistol braces. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not kicking it off with that. I mean, he, he kicked it off with the ghost gun rule. Uh, we knew this was coming when he, he publicly said, hey, I'm directing the ATF to come out with two new rules, one dealing with what he calls ghost guns or what the industry commonly refers to as 80% receivers or blanks or whatever you want to call it. That was the first rule, and I think the comment period on that may be expiring or has expired. It's getting close. 
Um, and then the brace rule, he directed them to come out within 60 days. The first one was within 30 days, if I remember correctly. And we knew it was coming. They leaked a similar rule back in, I want to say, November. You may recall that. You may not. There was a, a proposed rule in November that came out. Um, and that rule actually, believe it or not, liked it better. Uh, they weren't going to charge you the tax if you registered your brace gun. Mm -hmm. so the new rule, there's no, there's no exception. So if you have 13 armed brace guns and you want to register them in the NFA registry as SBRs, you got to pay $2,600 because, you know, 13 times $200, right. whatever the number might be. So you have to pay the tax still, which I find uh, just constitutionally offensive, to be quite honest. But it is what it is. ATF's position has always been, so they say, that we've never said that you put a brace on your gun that doesn't make it an SBR. We look at it from what we commonly refer to in the law as the totality of the circumstances. So they're going to look at the weight, the length of the pool. They're going to look at the type of magazine you're using, the optic. Is there a foreign grip on it? All this nonsense. Uh, and they're going to make a determination as to whether or not it's an SBR. Now, SB Tackle is the inventor of this brace. Um, I can't remember the founder's name. Forgive me if he's listening. Um, but he legitimately designed it to he assist. He don't listen to my podcast. <laughs> okay. I well, can't even get him on the podcast. I, I can't remember his name either, but. Um, nice guy. I've spoken with him at SHOT Show. Yeah. And he's very passionate about his product. He designed it, I believe, for a friend who was a, a war veteran who had trouble shooting and mm -hmm. legitimately designed it to help with exactly what it's designed to do. And that's the brace against your arm. Right. Um, obviously, people in the industry don't use it that way, just like. People in every industry don't necessarily use products that are designed for a certain purpose for that purpose. Uh, but nevertheless, so ATF came out with this notice of proposed rulemaking. It was leaked in November that basically said, hey, here are some things we look at. You know, they didn't have any, any uh, there was no form, there was no formula, there was no point system. They just said, these are some of the things we look at. My office actually created a, a form that kind of made a point system because I said we have to somehow compartmentalize and we have to aggregate and we have to distill this down in some sort of system. So we would look at clients' products and use that pro notice proposed rule and say, well, it, it's likely going to be considered an SBR or it's not. But it was very, it was very unknown, right? It was very gray. Like how in the hell is any normal consumer without a legal background going to be able to determine if this thing is going to cost them literally 10 years in prison, right? If you're caught with an unregistered NFA item, I believe the possible sentence is 10, it's either five or 10 years. It doesn't matter. It's, it's and you many lose years your federal prison. What's that? And you lose your guns. You lose your gun rights for the rest of your life. There is no way if you're a federal felon, uh, absent a presidential pardon, to get your gun rights back. That is the only way to get your gun rights back. I can commit murder in the state of Ohio, and I'm eligible to get my gun rights back because it's a state offense. But at the federal level, if I get convicted of mail fraud, don't do a day in jail. I'm never going to get my gun rights back because the president's not going to pardon me. The pardon all his crony friends, but not me. You know, I'm a nobody. So, you know, it, there's serious consequences to this. And I, I think I think the public doesn't understand that. You have you have moms and dads, you have business owners, you have the shopkeep down the street that own these things. And all of a sudden, with a stroke of a pen, they're going to be subject to significant federal incarceration, like we need more criminals in our jails, right? This is absolutely asinine and absurd. Um, and, and the law is antiquated, right? The whole NFA is antiquated. It was passed in 1934. Most, you know, most rifles were, um, you know, they weren't split receivers. You had mainly um, break action shotguns and revolvers, right? And no guns were that short. They just didn't, the technology wasn't there. It's just a completely different world we live in now. And I think obviously the law needs to change. But nevertheless, what Biden is trying to do is shoehorn this product into um, an NFA item to basically ban them. And if you've read the rule, it's so onerous. I would venture to say that 99% of brace guns would be illegal or, or NFA subject to NFA regulation. Mm -hmm. um, to bring it down to three ways, there, there is, um, let me bring it up so I make sure I get this right. But that's what I was looking for. Form, right? What's what's the ETF good at, Marty? What's the best thing they're 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 greatest at? Making forms, right? <laughs> I mean, how many damn yeah. forms can we all name, even if we're not lawyers, that the ETF has? It's crazy. Um, so they're coming out with a form. It's going to be called the forty nine ninety nine, 
right? So just like the 44, 73, and the form 4, form 1, form 5, form 20, form 23, now we have the 4999. Yeah. And on that, it breaks down, it's essentially a point system where you as a consumer are responsible for looking at this form and determining the factoring criteria of whether or not it's actually an NFA regulated item. And the first section is basic prerequisites. The weapon has to weigh at least 64 ounces. The weapon has to have an overall length between 12 and 26 inches. Completely arbitrary. I have no idea what this is even based on. Wait, so they've got a weight limit? Yep. The weapon, I'm reading the form right now. I'm looking at it on the notice of proposed rulemaking on ATF's website, um, or the federal government's website. It says the weapon must weigh at least 64 ounces. Copy and paste with, that link and put it in the chat so I can pull it up here. Yeah, let me... Uh, this is the federal red. This is the actual rule. Where's the chat? How do I do this? Chat there it is. Okay, there you go. This is the rule, and it's got a copy of the form in the rule. Okay. Yeah. So on that rule, you'll see section one prerequisites, and it'll say on the right side, it's weighed with the magazine unloaded, accessories removed. It's got to weigh at least sixty-four ounces, like. Um, and I don't know their theory or their policy as to why they, they came up with it from some length of pool is another good example of that. If I remember correctly, length of pool actually was a term the NRA developed back in like the 70s or something. Um, it's not in the law, but it's something you'll see from, from person to person. What's that? It differs from person to person. Oh, absolutely. 100%. So when you say the length Nobody of pool, has can't the same be my wife, who's five foot four, has a very much different length of pool compared to my gigantic long arms, right? It's just, it's a very different thing. Same thing with the weight of the gun, right? I mean, I can hold a lot more weight than my wife can. Right. Um, and then you look at section one again, second prerequisite, the weapon must have an overall length between 12 and 26 inches. Weapon must both, weapon must meet both prerequisites in order to proceed to section two. So these, these, these brace guns have to weigh that much and have to have that much length. Okay. And then you get into the fun stuff, accessory characteristics where they start assigning point values. And for instance, they have, you get points based on accessory design, rear surface. So how it looks, you know, how it looks like that matters as to whether or not it's an SBR. Um, Real surface area of the actual brace itself. I mean, you know, the SP Tacticals have more surface areas. Mm -hmm. I've seen some companies that make uh, blank inserts for the back of the brace. That would be a big problem, obviously. Because um, the design, the point is, is that they don't want it to be used on the shoulder. It can't be designed for that. Adjustability, you lose, uh, I guess you lose point or gain points, how you want to look at it, if the brace is adjustable, right? I don't know why a brace shouldn't be adjustable, right? Why my arm is pretty long, so I might want it to be in different parts of my arm. For Everybody has different lengths of arms. So <laughs> you know, right? it, it, just, it gets crazy. It just gets crazier and crazier. And remember, if you determine that your gun is going to be an FA gun, which it will be when you look at this, you have to still pay the tax. You still have to get the gun engraved. So not only are you paying $200, you also got to pay whatever they're going to charge you $100 to engrave the gun. That's your local gunsmith or whoever does it. Like, uh, I did markings in Texas where I said mine. Um, but what you, has, you get the for all that. Get the markings, the butt, the, the bray or the gun? The gun. If you're going to register it on the NFA registry on what we call a Form 1, meaning you're making your own short barrel rifle, you have to engrave the name of the owner, the city, and the state to the ATS specifications. Okay, so... You have to engrave it. I make my own SBRs from time to time. I, have, I send it off to be engraved. It has the name of my trust, my city, and my state, right? So that all has to be done if you register these. So let's say hypothetically there's somebody out there who has 13 of these brace guns. So that's $2,600 in tax, plus another, you know, $1,300, give or take, in, in engraving fees. Engravings. All right. It, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's $4,000. Plus the downtime while you're waiting for the, the paperwork. That's right. So there's another option. You can take the brace off and just not have a, a, a brace on it at all, or you can put a stock on it and register it, of course. Well, you, you can, can have the, the, uh, the, what is it, the the buffer tube. You can just have the buffer tube, but it can't have notches in it. I believe that's, I'd have to double check that. I'm not sure if that's correct. That may be correct. 
I'm pretty um, sure that's correct. I think I read that. So it, if you take the brace off, it can't have the buffer tube can't have the notches. Yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Because um, at that point, then they go into intention. It will. You could put one back on it if you wanted to. You, well, know, how, you know how they rule stuff. Well, and, and that's just it, right? So you asked a more general question at the beginning of the podcast. You know what's going on with ATF, and you know what, what, how's the government utilizing the ATF? And every time you see a different presidential administration, you see the culture change. You've seen it change from Trump to Biden, especially with the nomination of, of Mr. Chipman, who is a notoriously anti-gunner. There was a video of him. He was being uh, inquired upon in Congress, and he blatantly came out and said that he doesn't think AR-15 should be legal. Like, it just should be illegal. He was one of the uh, co-founders of the uh, – was it the Brady Foundation? Yeah, I'm with them in action. The, 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 uh, uh, Every Town for Gun Safety, one of those organizations, they all kind of are in bed the, with, together with each other one way or another. But uh, the end of the day – Anti-gun, his, his whole background – it's, a, it's absolutely anti-gun. It's absolutely anti-constitutional, in my opinion. At the end of the day, what you have here is an agency that takes advantage of very nebulous laws that have a lot of gray built in. And they get to read this. David Chipman guy, he is, there's no bones about it. He is anti-gun. There's there's no, oh, yeah. you know, I don't yeah. think he's denying it. He is completely anti-gun. And they're yeah. wanting to point him to the ATF, this, uh, government entity that determines what's legal and what's not legal. I mean, they don't make the laws, but they, they make suggestions that then lawmakers go and based on their suggestions, you know, form their laws on. Right. They assist with the promulgation of the rules and how to interpret the law. And, yeah. and that's the problem. It's they're They are assigned to this authority that completely changes how the law has been enforced for years and years and years. You've seen it with the bump stock ban. Now, look, I'm not saying bump stock are these, these great inventions that should be, you know, in every household. I, I, I never owned one. Doesn't matter. Doesn't it matter. doesn't matter. That's exactly right because they they were absolutely not machine guns, and all of a sudden, because something tragic happened, we're just going to say the law means something different. That's that's called a lack of absolute truth, and we need an, uh, we need absolute truth in the law. Or how else do you know you're breaking the law, right? And this is why we have a Congress to pass new laws. And if they can't get them passed, well, gee, maybe there's a, a reason why they can't be passed. Well, right? speaking maybe, of the the uh, bump stock, isn't isn't wasn't that overturned? It's. I think it's still currently being litigated. I believe um, as to one of the plaintiffs, it would stay, meaning it's not going to be enforced against that person until the litigation resolves itself. I have not heard that that litigation has resolved itself. So. As of today, I believe the rule still stands. Yeah, the Ninth Circuit Court deemed it unconstitutional. We did. Okay. Yeah. So that only applies in the Ninth Circuit then. It doesn't necessarily apply countrywide. Sure. So if the feds wanted to enforce it in my circuit, the Sixth Circuit, they could. Now, obviously, the Ninth Circuit's opinion would be persuasive, but it's not binding on the Sixth Circuit. Let me see here. Bump stock ban. It was the Sixth Circuit Court that did it. That's our. That's, that's Ohio and, and part of Kentucky and maybe Michigan. I can't remember. Let's look here. Let's find out. I'm sure federal appeals court tosses out challenge to bump stock ban. This is three weeks ago. There you go. Yeah. It says they tossed out the challenge to it. Oh, the challenge. Right. So let me read real quick. This is on the Hill. Federal appeals court Thursday tossed out. A challenge to the federal ban on bump stock devices that allow weapons to fire at more rapid pace. The fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that Daniel Patrick, the gun owner, brought the case did not have standing. So they ruled on a procedural matter, I guess. Um, but I think there was a few of them. Uh, Tenth Circuit Court reverses course, lets decision on bump stock ban. Yeah, so I still think it's kind of working its way through the courts, but we're not. Ha I don't think we're having any giant luck. Where there's just this great decision that, from what but I, but it's recall, not no, but it's not dead. They're still fighting it. I believe that's correct. I do believe that's correct. But it's just tied up in a bunch of lawsuits. But until then, that ruling is still there. You can't. Oh, that's, yeah. And if the Supreme Court doesn't take it, then where are you at? I mean, you have just a patchwork of conflicting laws. It might be legal in one jurisdiction and not legal in another, right? Right. So it's problematic. Um, 
But back to the brace, um, if you pull up the uh, actual form, you can follow along and just kind of read some of this nonsense on what they're going to look at. And then it gets into section three. I've kind of covered briefly section two, and it goes to the configuration of the weapon, where it talks about length of pull, um, and it gives points depending on the length of pull, not the user. It should get points based on the user and their length of pull, right? Um, it gives uh, points based on attachment method, modifications and configuration, and peripheral accessories. You get four points if it's configured weighing more than 120 ounces. Uh, presence of a bipod or monopod, two points. Presence of a sight scope with eye relief incompatible with one-handed fire, four points. And That's how many crazy. points does it take to, to make one? A I, I think I looked at it the other day. I think it's four points. Let me look. It's hard to read this dang thing. Completely ridiculous. Oh, it's just and remember, you're supposed to figure this out. Right? Um, I mean, handguns have sights on them. Here it is at the very bottom, Marty. It says a score of four points or more indicates a shorter fire design. So the, literally, the simple addition of a secondary grip, it's an SBR. That, that simple addition is enough to make it an SBR. Because it makes it more deadlier. I, <laughs> more deadly. Because President Biden wants it, and the people who put him in the office want it. That's why. Let's be honest. Let's just be honest. They want to ban guns. And, to, and then they say they don't, but they do. We all know they do. It's one thing after another. Well, they're basically redefining what a rifle is, too. They're trying I, to redefine what a rifle yeah. is. It's, it's nuts. It's just nutty. And what can everybody do? Are you asked me that at the beginning of the class. Look, you have to make your comments heard. Um, there's a comment period. I think it ends in 85 days. It just opened up, I think, on June 6th. You can do it by fax. You can do it by mail. Or you can do it through their online portal. So uh, you need to make your comments heard. People need to get their voices out there. The problem is, is when the rule passes, I don't see a Republican president rescinding it because what's the political gain, right? I, and I don't care what party you are, you make decisions based on the gain that affects you, right? You need some sort of benefit. I don't know what benefit they're going to get by overturning that rule. It, it, once it's there, it's there. So just in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it's SB probably Tactical, I think, has a link. Yeah. So if you go to SB Tactical, yeah, right of course, on their front page there, they've got a link. Uh, and if you're watching on the video, you just saw me go there. I clicked on that link, and then it brought you to it's basically their summary of what the proposed rule is. So they've got it uh, summarized here, everything that uh, Derek was just going over there. Um, they've got the, the highlights uh, dotted on there, impact of the proposed rule. Uh, and then there's a link as you go on down, federal register uh, factoring criteria for the firearm with uh, so link to comment. So if you click there, it takes you to the federal register. Yeah, I just sent you the link, the direct link to there. Okay. To the comment period. So in that page you're looking on, if you keep going down, you'll find there it is, regulations.gov. You just passed it. Right here? Right there. That's how you can submit your comments. You can see it under the word addresses. There's three ways. Right here? Yeah. There it is. So you uh, may submit comments identified by docket number ATF 2021-R08 by any of the following methods. Federal e-rulemaking portal, and there's a link there. Follow the instructions for submitting comments. You mail it, and it gives you the uh, mailing address, and then there's a fax. So you can fax it in. It's 202-648-9741. And then there's instructions. All submissions received should include the agency Name and docket number ATF 2021R-08 for this notice of proposed rulemaking. All properly completed comments received will be posted without change to the federal e-rulemaking portal, www.regulations.gov, including any personal information provided. For detailed instructions on submitting comments and additional information on the rulemaking process see the public participation heading of the supplementary information section of this document uh, and then it goes on and yeah i think it's into the rule i mean there's just yeah. there's just look at all this 
how many people do you and I know that own a couple guns, but they're not really in the industry like you and I are? Right? They don't live and breathe it. So they probably don't even know this is going on. Right, exactly. They have no I mean, idea. They just bought their only AR. They're never going to buy another one two years ago, and the dealer happened to talk them into an arm brace. And all of a sudden, they're a felon. Yeah. And, you know, and hopefully somebody just stumbled across the podcast and they're hearing this and they're listening to it and they're like, oh shit, I need to go tell my buddy across the street. I need to go you, tell you, my aunt. I need to go tell my yeah. uncle. I need to go tell, you tell everybody. You need to tell anybody and everybody, even people you don't know. Yeah. And they need you to tell You got me amped up on my birthday, Marty. Thanks. Do what? <laughs> you got me amped up on my birthday. <laughs> I'm trying to get that blood flowing, buddy. <laughs> Make you feel young again. I mean, look, I, I'm not berating the ETF. They have a job to do. It is what it is. You know, we have a great working relationship with them traditionally. But you know what? They shouldn't have a job to do. There should not be. Uh, there should be no NFA. You well, know? half of the federal government shouldn't exist, in my opinion. So yeah, exactly. exactly. This, this, is, this is a great place to start. You know, uh, sizing down the government is the, the ATF. Get rid of the ATF. Yeah. Wasn't uh, Rand Paul who proposed that? Be rid of the ATF? Or was it Ron Paul? Might have been Ron Paul. I don't know, but he should be president. <laughs> Good luck. Or something. Yeah, anyway. yeah. He should be the leader of the ATF. Um, but, yeah, Ron Paul calls to abolish ATF in 2007. So that was Ron. But, I mean, if you're sitting at home and you're listening to this, you're like, you know, I'm not going to do that. It's not going to make a difference. There's nothing I can do to do it. But... Yeah, there is. The more yeah. people that they hear from and they they see that this is something that is not a popular decision, then they're going to think twice about it. Now, they could still go ahead and do it, you know, no matter they what. Will. I and think they will. The, that's what happened with the bump stocks. You know, popular yeah. vote and comments were don't do it, but they still went ahead and did it. So. Yeah. But at least everybody goes on record, and if anything ever comes up again, then, you know, it, it, oh, it, the backing, you know, it just shows that there is a backing, there is support for it. And they, you know, they're supposed to be showing all the results, too, the number of people that ride in, right? Don't they, in that right. Thing? And even if, even if your listeners don't have one, you have to understand that this is just one item. It's just going to be another item tomorrow. And when the hell did a brace become like this deadly instrument? When it, what, when has that ever been like an issue where that's what led to the massive deaths? I when think did that, a weapon under 16 inches become more deadly than a weapon oh, over 16 inches? The, the shooter in Dayton, Ohio, I think, used a brace. But that's not why he was effective. I would, at least that's what I would argue. You could have done that with a normal length mil spec AR-15 just as easily. Yeah. Uh, is what it is. I'm talking to the wall here. So this right. You know. well, it goes back to the bump stock too. Of course, you know their their big springboard on that was the Las Vegas shooter. You know he sure. used the bump stock, and no before that nobody really even heard of a bump. They're like, what's a bump right. stock? And the people in the community, like you and me, were like, it's a gimmick. You know, it's 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 a novelty yeah. item. It's not something that I would ever want or use. Right. But at the same time, you know I like you, you know, I see where they're going with it. They take this, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. So yeah. even though I, you know, I could care less about a bump stock, I still voiced my opinion and showed my uh, opposition to it. And Marty, here's the thing, you know, I've lived long enough, you live long enough to know what's, what, what the trajectory is. You know, they, it's always something more. We give them this, they're going to want something more. We give them that, it's something more. And pretty soon they've eaten enough bites of the cake, there's no cake left for everybody. Yeah. So, and this gets back to what I was talking about earlier too, is like, so by using the ATF, they're kind of circumventing the laws, right? Uh, yeah, in layman's term, yeah, there's, there's legal jurisprudence on the authority that agencies and departments have. I mean, they're not allowed to write the law, but they write the rules on how the law is enforced and what it means and things like that. And uh, I know there's been some lawsuits filed in the gun arena to try and challenge that, predominantly with the bump stock ban. But we've not, to my knowledge, gotten a lot of traction with that. But yeah, you know, you have these laws that need to be enforced, and the ATF takes advantage of that, in my opinion, depending on what, who, what the political climate is. 
Yeah, and that's what that's what Biden is doing is he's trying to circumvent our normal standard operation procedures for you know passing laws like this. Mm-hmm. And he's going through and using the ATF to redefine basically what something is, just like they did with the the bump stocks, calling them machine guns. Right. Where, you know, there's nothing about a bump stock that even comes close to the definition of of what a machine gun is. And that that's that's what I was reading earlier too. You know, and that that was the argument, and that's why it was being overturned, is because you know the bump stock does nothing. For one put one one trigger pull, one bullet, it still does that. You still one trigger pull, one bullet instead of one trigger pull, multiple bullets coming out. Sure. I mean, even well, multiple, you still only get one bullet come out with <laughs> at a time saw, even on full auto. You saw a lot of problems with how the law was written in 19, 19, 1968 gun control. I, don't know, I had a brain fart, but back then when they defined firearm. You saw this in the new notice proposed rulemaking with regards to ghost guns, and they started talking about split receivers and the AR style gun, right? Because the way they define firearm, because not all the necessary components were housed in one one receiver, the upper or the lower, neither was actually considered a firearm, right? When you look at the definition, it has to include, I'm going to butcher this, um, it has to include the uh, bolt or breech lock the hammer, and there's another component. But in the AR, you know, the bolts in the upper and everything else is in the lower. There's actually a case about this that was cited by ATF. It's called the Roe case out of California, R-O-H. And uh, forgive me if I get the facts wrong, I'm doing this from memory, but if I remember correctly, this gentleman would sell uh, unfinished lower receivers and basically they would come to his store and he said, put it in this machine and hit the red button and voila, there's a gun. And they were prosecuting him for this, and, he, and his attorney very smartly said, that's not a gun. The bolt's not housed in it, and that doesn't meet the definition. And he won, right? So that scared the ATF, because now AR-15s aren't guns mm-hmm. at all, subject to any regulation. Um, so but that's how the ATF's always enforced ARs, because technology is advanced beyond the law. But that's Congress's job. That's what our tax dollars pay these assholes for, right? is rewrite the law, make it conform to today's time if you want. Don't just make it up as you go on some political win. Actually have a debate about it. Let's do your job. Anyways, <laughs> piss me off. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to do that on your birthday. <laughs> if you brought up California. <laughs> yes. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, California uh, ruling by Judge um, Benitez. Mm-hmm. Roger Benitez, B-E-N-I-T-E-Z. Uh, he is a, a senior United States district judge on the United States Court of the Southern District of California. He was appointed by George W. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has been uh, a pain in California's ass uh, for a while. And I guess his his one before this was, we talked about it earlier, the um, magazines. Was it the magazines? Yeah. Mm-hmm. saying that was un- unconstitutional yeah, um, he's getting a lot of heat for the new one too he's they're really coming after him for it but the nice thing about being a federal judge is you can't be you really can't be fired get to be impeached can't be fired but you know get and come after you for, with bombs and stuff <laughs> well that's true too the governor of california bashed him came out of came yeah out but it's yeah it's, it's oh lord that was loud it's the um, the corrupt government there in California that's really attacking him and attacking mm-hmm. his decision. Um, for instance, California appeals court ruling upended assault weapons ban. Sacramento, California. California's governor denounced its starkly personal terms. Uh, California's governor denounced in starkly personal terms a federal judge's upending of the state's restrictions on assault weapons as officials announced the filing Thursday of a formal notice that they will appeal the decision. They described last week's ruling by U.S. District Judge Roger Benitez as an outlier that conflicts with at least six other federal decisions 
upholding assault weapon laws in California and elsewhere, a ruling that is designed to get the issues before a recently more conservative U.S. Supreme Court. And, of course, that's the Newsom douche. Um, yeah, and then, obviously, the media started spinning everything. I mean, some of the points the judge made out was this law, I think, passed in 89, if I remember correctly, after a shooting. And he said, look, it's a failure, right? It hasn't actually prevented any more mass shootings. It, it's, it's not working, right? So it's, that's part of the constitutional analysis if you're balancing, you know, um, uh, the protection of society versus, you know, the, the infringement on someone's civil liberties. Um, it's called the standard of review when you challenge something that's constitution and there's different standards and regarding guns, they, the Supreme Court has not decided what standard to use. For, for layman's terms, for your listeners, it's basically an easy, medium and hard standard. And depending on what the right is, it will be applied against that standard. Like freedom of speech, I believe, is applied against the hard standard. So it takes a lot for the government to regulate freedom of speech. And most of the courts on guns have been coming down to the middle. Right now, they won't do the easy one because Scalia basically shut that out of the park in the Heller decision. So that's it's not going to be what we call rational basis. It's got to be something higher than that or heightened scrutiny, as they say. Um, and the, I actually had a case uh, in the Sixth Circuit where I argued should it should be strict scrutiny. And I had a judge agree with me, but the other two judges did not. Um, and when you read these decisions, it's just not based in anything. It's very short. It's very not well thought out or analyzed, but Benitez's opinion is well thought out. It's well supported. Uh, in the Sixth Circuit, when we had the case that um, uh, set the standard as the hard standard, the strict scrutiny standard, I think it was written by Justice Boggs. It, he, he went through every jurisdiction that wrote that it should be a, 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 the middle standard, and he just annihilated every one of them. Just, and then they overruled him on bonk, meaning the entire court got together and said, you're wrong, and here's why. And that decision was garbage. So it's just it's just politics at its, its best. But I think his decision is right. Um, I think he used the term that the ER-15 is a Swiss Army knife of guns. Does that sound right? Yeah, he compared it to a Swiss Army knife, which I didn't think was a very stellar comparison, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he did that, and they they had a field day with that. Oh, it's much more deadly. It's not the end of the day. Knife. Well, more people are killed by knives than firearms. So you asked me before the show started. You know about the stay. I think he put it on an automatic stay on the decision. Yeah, so he made the decision, and then he's then he put a stay on it after he made the decision. And I was asking you, why would he do that? Why well, would he just because I mean he's a federal judge, and it was ruled well, unconstitutional. Well, he did. It's pretty common, I think. Um, he knows it's going to be appealed. I think it was request. It might have been requested by uh, the government to put the stay on. That stay, just so you know, will likely be extended. It's going to take more than 30 days for the appeal to wind its way through the courts. Yeah. So it's instead of upsetting that's what they did the on the magazine ban. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why there wasn't a stay or if there was a stay and it expired. I don't think there was a stay, if I remember correctly. Um, but I, I haven't researched this, but my guess is that, you know, they're appealing it. The government requested it. So instead of rocking the boat, let's wait to see how the appeals court fleshes it out. So it doesn't create more guns and, you know, the marketplace that are illegal and if they overturn it. I think they will overturn it. I think the Ninth Circuit will overturn it. With the, with the magazine, the state is still appealing the 2017 ruling that he did on the magazines. And didn't the state get, didn't they put a stay in place? Yeah. They put yeah a stay. Right. So people, I mean, he's, it's ruled that it's unconstitutional, but they're appealing it. And during the appeals process, nobody can can still they can't That's buy right. the magazines. they can't have the magazines even right. though yeah. The term. Yeah. yeah i thought that's what happened but it's not uncommon to have stays on things like that it doesn't surprise me um i don't think the ninth circuit's going to uphold his decision i think they'll overturn it just based on historic precedent in that area it's a very liberal court now trump has done a good job of putting in judges in that area right trump did one really good thing and that was his judicial point so maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get the right panel. And, and, but even if the panel rules in favor of what the judge said at the district level, that can still be overturned on bonk, which means that the entire court gets together and says, we don't like what these three judges decided. We're going to do something different. And then from there, it can go up to the Supreme Court. So this is going to take years to be resolved. If the Supreme Court will be hear it, they might not hear it. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just... 
for for California, you know, it sucks. To it does, you know, great news, and then all of a sudden it's like, but yeah, no. it's a great no. We needed the victory. You need the, it's easier to keep winning if you win from the start. That's absolutely true. Yeah, but it's California. I feel like the Republicans let that state go the way of the 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 dodo bird probably 10, 20 years ago. They just kind of gave up on it. So let's see. Um, you were talking about the Swiss Army. I was trying to find his um, statement about the Swiss Army knife. Uh, compared to AR-15 rifle to a Swiss Army knife has no basis in law or fact. The ban on assault weapons will not put an end to all gun violence, but it is one important tool to the state has to protect the safety of Californians while also protecting the rights of law-abiding residents who choose to possess firearms. We have appealed the district court's ruling and will continue our defense of the state's uh, common sense gun laws. This is the Benita guy. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal said he stated to give them a chance to appeal, which is what I figured. Um, usually your, your appeal window is 30 days, so it's in line with the appeal window. And then the appeals court will take it over and go from there. Um, but they keep yeah. stating that California's assault weapons ban has saved lives, which they have no facts to back no. that up. It's they crazy. use statistics. They they just they cherry pick, right? I mean, you can you can say, well, California. They think what they said, Marty, is California has lower deaths than the entire country. Well, you can't say that's directly the result of your ban. There's so many variables. Right. I mean, you could name all kinds of variables. The cultures changed. I don't know. People became more Christian. I don't know. Whatever it might be. There's all kinds of different variables, I think, that could play a part in that. I think violent deaths worldwide have gone progressively gone down over the years. Um, and you can't just say it's because of these laws. I just think that's just uh, intellectually dishonest. Well, people are living longer, you know. People live longer than general. It's, that's because of science. Because I think it's because of many different. They should they should outlaw science. <laughs> uh, uh, trying to find his Swiss Army knife. Outlaw science. You ever you have any neighbors where you live that have those the signs up front that just to let you know this is what I believe and there's like ten things listed. You ever seen those? No, and uh, signs. Yeah, there's these yard signs. My neighbors I have don't them. Allow those here. You know, say I believe in, in, in this house. Free speech here. You know, in this house, we believe in science. We believe in e equality, and I'm like, oh my God, thank you for telling me. Like, I needed to know that. Right. I really could care less what you believe. <sighs> it's just virtue signaling, man. It's nonsense. This is why I'm moving. I'm getting out of the city. You can't find that quote either, but he definitely made it. Yeah, I'm not getting this that. Benita douche. Well, good for him for standing up in an atmosphere that's not too friendly to him. Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife or AR-15. Who is Roger Reynas? It's a good thing I had it. Might have to read the opinion to get the actual verbiage. Here I mean, it's go. not here. I've read it like. 10 times. I just can't find it now. Run on Twitter, I think. Give me a second here. All right. Quote, uh, this is from Guns Down America, whatever that is. It doesn't okay. sound good, but they quoted him, so hopefully it's accurate. I don't know if it is, guys. Just FYI. It says, according to Judge Rod Roger Benitez, quote, like the Swiss Army knife, the popular AR-15 rifle is a perfect combination of home defense weapon and homeland defense equipment. So, and then they have this thing on their blog about the differences between the two one's not a gun you idiots <laughs> <laughs> right he missed the point he missed the point <sighs> anyway um that's something to keep an eye on and you know yeah. definitely uh i mean there's really not much we can do other than you talk no. to your congressman you talk to your right. local um politicians officials well the number one thing your listeners can do with regards to something like that is they have to vote in the presidential election the president is the one who gets to nominate federal judges and make these decisions 
And like I said, Trump really did his best to really affect the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal. So let's see what happens. But make sure you're voting the presidential elections. And, and they also get to appoint the head of the ATF. <laughs> we haven't had an actual director of ATF since when? How long ago was that? It's been a long time. Am I still sharing my screen? Was it 2013, I think? Todd Jones, was that it? That sounds right. Barack Obama, Todd Jones, I think that was it. Yeah. And then we just have acting directors after that because they can't get through the Senate. But anyways. So is this guy, is he is he the head of the ATF now or is he still? No. Um, acting? He'll, he'll never get confirmed. And I just don't think it'll happen. He'll be the acting director. Well, look, he can still do a lot of damage as acting director. He already he is. Says, yeah. yeah. He sets the tempo. He sets the culture. So look what he's doing. Yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting. I mean, there is an article I saw a couple weeks ago that really kind of threw it was trying. It kind of made the ETF look bad because they're like, look, there's all these uh, uh, mistakes being made, and no one's getting revoked. They just settle these cases, and I just don't know if that's going to influence the ATF to come out harder on FFLs or not. We'll have to wait and see, you know. But you know, if they want a sharp pen when they come to visit your store. They're going to have a sharp pen. If you get one thing wrong, they can revoke you. Because those laws, it's a kangaroo court at a revocation hearing. I've been through them. There's yeah. no evidence that you get before the, the hearing. The hearing officer is a retired ATF agent. No one's put under oath. <laughs> you have no right to discovery. It's all nonsense. So let's let's back up just a little bit, just so people understand what what the ATF is doing. It's it's not it's not a law. At this point, what they're saying, this is just their recommendation on how if if somebody's faced with a lawsuit, how it would be judged. Is that right? Am I um, saying that right? I think I know what you're trying to say, Marty, so I'm going to say it another way. You tell me yes. if I'm right. Um, if you're referring to the new notice of proposed rulemaking, correct? For Yeah, for the pistol brace. Right, yeah. So what a notice of proposed rulemaking is, is the, the, the uh, task agency here, the ETF, uh, being requested by the executive branch to issue a new rule on the enforcement of the National Firearms Act and Gun Control Act as it applies to short barrel rifles in conjunction with arm braces. So that's what they came out with. They're saying this is how we think the law it was intended when it was written. We think this is how it should be enforced. We want to adopt this as the actual enforcement. So it would come under what we call the Code of Federal Regulations, which is essentially a supplement, if you will, to the law. Right. And how we're going to enforce it further defines things and fleshes things out. So that's what it is. And so you have 90 day comment period by law and the window just opened, I think, on June 6th, if I remember correctly. And during the comment period. This is where you, John Public, get to right. state your reason as to why you disagree in a respectful manner. Yeah. Uh, because they, I, from what I understand, that they, they won't consider anything that's, uh, you know, if you're using inflammatory language and threats and stuff like that, then they just toss those out. Probably. Yeah, and, and remember, this is not to say that if you currently have a braced AR-15 with a night force optic on it and a mono, you know, mono bipod on the end and a flashlight and a 60 round magazine that that's legal today. The ATF has never said that. Right. They just said that when you look at the brace in and of itself, it's just a brace and you could put it on an AR-15 and it could still be a handgun. But they're not saying they never said it always was. Right. Mm -hmm. So what they've done with this rule is to try to pro provide finality, that definitiveness, if you will. The problem is it's the way that they're looking at this is so overly broad. None of them are legal. almost. None of them. Mm -hmm. Even the people that have significant war injuries from Iraq, like a lot of my friends that have trouble with dexterity or using their arms. And everybody knows military people love guns. And so this is probably going to predominantly affect people like that. You know, the actual handicapped people that need that item. Right. So as it stands right now, people don't need to do anything with their pistol brace <sighs> firearms. At, at this point in time. Yeah, 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 me and you talk, and I would tell you that informally what my, my opinion is, is that 
you have a very small amount of risk of being prosecuted for anything. Could they? Yeah, they can make an argument because, again, there's never been a rule saying that arm braces are legal when attached to your gun because they look at the overall apparatus, right? And they've always taken that position, according to them. Mm -hmm. So they could prosecute you today for it, but they can't prosecute you based on the enforcement of this new rule because it hasn't taken effect yet, right? So it would be very difficult for them to prosecute you. Right, because there's no there's no bright line rule. They want this bright line rule because it gives them power to prosecute you. Right? It makes their case much stronger. It makes right. it easier for them to convict you. Because now here's the criteria, you feel the criteria, go to prison. Right, which goes back to my original is like this is this is ammo or a tool for the prosecutors to use yeah. when or if you have to yeah. go to court over it. I think that's a fair, that's a fair partial assessment of the overall situation. Sure. Yeah. So, so I'm hesitant to say, you know, don't, you know, don't start modifying your, your pistols right now because this could, this could go away, right? I mean, it could get overturned, could get dropped. Theoretically, yes. I don't see that writing on the wall, though. Yeah, you think it's going to go all the way through? Yeah, I do. Um, I would bet money on it. I really do. Millions of people are going to be felons overnight. So your options are going to be, let's say, if this goes through, you talked a little bit about them, but so your options would be to scale them down to the point criteria that they say. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, or remove remove the brace in a fashion that returns it back to uh, a pistol. And I mm -hmm. and we're kind of in question right now whether that means you got to take your buffer tube off and get a pistol buffer tube. Or yeah, not. I, I haven't read that part. Okay. I guess I don't know for certain. A smooth uh, buffer tube, non-notched. Um, or you turn your firearms in. You turn them over. Basically, yes, you, yeah, you can do that. ATF will accept them. Yes, they're not going to give you a dime for them. No, no. Uh, but that's that's basically your three options. Right? Yeah, I'm looking. They actually talk about the options. I'm trying to find them real quick. Uh, this is a different design. This damn rule so long. I'm just trying to find it real quick. Um, oh, I know it's ridiculously long. I think that's part of the reason. Why they do um, it. Maybe destruction. You have a keyword. Here we go. I found it. All right. Current unlicensed possessors. In order to comply with the provisions of the NFA, current unlicensed possessors of a fireman equipped with a stable laser brace and a barrel length of less than 16 inches will qualify as an SBR, as indicated in ATF worksheet 4999, have one of the following actions before the effective date of a final rule. So you know the effective date will probably take from today eight months to two years, my guess, because they have a 90 day comment period. Then it's going to be published in the register for a certain amount of time before it actually takes effect. So there's there's some time. But before the effective date of that final rule, you can, one, permanently remove or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached, thus converting the firearm back to its original pistol configuration, as long as it was originally configured without a stock and as a pistol, and thereby removing it from regulation as a quote-unquote firearm under the NFA. Exercising this option would mean the pistol would no longer be equipped with the stabilizing brace within the meaning of the proposed rule. That's number one. Number two, remove the short barrel and attach a 16 inch or longer barrel to the firearm, thus removing it from the provisions in the NFA. Number three, destroy the firearm. ATF will publish information regarding proper, proper destruction on its website. Number four, turn the firearm into your local ATF office. And then number five, complete and submit an application to make and register a firearm form one as part of the submission, pay the tax of $200. It's required. And then you have to engrave the firearm with the name, city, and state of the maker of the firearm, all other markings, blah, 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 blah. So that's basically it. So you register it, you can destroy it, you can turn it in, or you can reconfigure it. So one of those options wouldn't be an option if you bought it from the manufacturer as a as a pistol, correct? So if you change the barrel length, the one that you bought from a manufacturer, because it's registered as a pistol, so then you you can't change it to a rifle at that point. 
to, to yeah, I'm gonna have to keep me I have to think about that one to make sure I'm not wrong. I hear what you're saying, I understand the question, I've addressed it in the past. I just need to really kind of think about it and analyze that before I provide an answer. Yeah. I think you're right. I believe you're right, but I'm not certain. Because at that point, that that's what it was registered at. So if you buy one from Palmetto State Armory, that's a mm-hmm. pistol. Right. And then this drops, and you're like, well, I'll just add a 16-inch barrel to it. That's not going to be a solution, to my understanding. You're, I think your thinking is correct. I just I just can't give you an answer today. I need to look at the rags on it, because this is getting the area something where... to think about. Yeah, something right. to think about. Because that's going to be an issue for people. Absolutely. And this is the kind of area that I deal with that you would think common sense would prevail, but it doesn't. So, yeah, I really have to dig into the regs every time I get asked questions like that to make sure I'm right. Because the consequences are criminal if I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, millions of people are going to be be felons, going to be criminals. Do we know any numbers on how many are in the marketplace? Have you seen any statistics on that? 10, 10 to 40 million? <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Google, maybe Google knows. I think 10 million. I was listening to an interview with, oh, and that guy's name that we were trying to think of at uh, SB is, I just had it here. Where's my SB tactical? I'll just do it again. He said he's made at least three million of one of their mm-hmm. designs, just one of their designs. He said, "I've I've sold three million of just one of them." I mean, they're everywhere. They really are. It, it became so prolific that they were just standard fare on most a lot of AR-15s. Yeah. Um, I mean the the I think was it the CZ uh, Scorpion used them or maybe not? I can't yeah. remember. Uzi uh, Uzi Tribal. Strybog used them. Strybog, Uzi is is using them. Yep. Um, the variants on the MP5, they were using them. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. His name is something Boz or Bose or Alec Bosco. Sounds right. Uh, Alex Bosco, USMC, an Army vet, retired Alex Bosco, was shooting with a disabled combat veteran when the range master asked Bosco's friend to stop firing for safety concerns due to lack of control. Determined to help his friend and other wounded combat veterans, Bosco had an idea. He produced the first pistol stabilizing brace prototype uh, in his garage. Mm -hmm. History. So that's him, Alex Bosco. Well, I hope he made all his money. <laughs> well, I just hope something could be done about this. I hope enough people speak up. And and that's not the only thing that you can do, but that is that is like the most powerful thing you can do right now is go to that link that we said, uh, which was on this website. Yeah. Register.gov, I think. Register.gov. And SB Tactical has a link. You can go to their website. There's several. I'll have a link in the show notes. uh, Yeah, Yeah, so you go to my show notes. I'll have a link there where you can go also. Um, But just being vocal and talking to people about this and educating, uh, like I said, educating the uneducated. We're, We're... preaching to the choir you know you lead heads you know what's going on here but uh, i mean you you see the importance of this and where it's headed and what it can lead to and uh and and unless we speak up and speak our mind you can't sit around and be quiet and just hope it goes away because it's not going to it's going to get worse so you you gotta you gotta put the bug in these jack wagons ears and let them know that what they're doing is wrong it's unconstitutional and we don't want it so let your your senators, your representatives, uh, state, local, uh, you know, let your freaking mayor know. You just never know who's got somebody else's ear. So let everybody know where you stand on it and do it in a, you know, don't be a douchebag about it. You know, 
don't be abrasive about it. Just do it in a calm, educational, matter-of-fact manner. State the facts. And uh, that'll go a lot further than um, profanity and yeah. Kind of now, yeah, take the higher ground. Absolutely. It's most effective. But rise up. Burn down the man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not encouraging anybody to do anything like that. But. No, I'm, I'm not either until it comes to that. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to remain silent. There's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, was there anything else that we were, we were going to talk about? Those were the two main things. And we had talked a little, Oh, the red flag laws is another thing that they're, yeah. you know, they're so, trying to cram down our throats. Well, uh, yeah, that's a state issue. All Biden had ATF do was make a, a generalized proposed law that states could adopt you know, whatever, it's useless unless the states adopt it. So I'm yeah. not overly concerned with it. Ohio, they, the governor's been wanting that, our Republican governor's been wanting that since the Dayton shooting. And he has That's got another it. thing that, you know, you still got to, you got to put it on the forefront of your representative's mind and let them know that you're not behind something like that. Well, I think Ohio's a really good case study in that, right, Marty? Because we have a governor that very much wants red flag laws, but our Congress people that we put, we call the General Assembly that we put into office have said, no, F you. They've even written vetoes on gun bills that he won't sign. So, you know, you have to elect the right people. You got to get the right people in office. Exactly. And it starts locally. Absolutely. Starts grassroots. Starts as, as your class uh, president. <laughs> you right. in, you right. know, in high school, who your class president starts there. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And those people probably become politicians because that's what they're into. Yep, absolutely. Well, I hope this has been an enjoyable birthday uh, for you, Derek. I appreciate it, Marty. Sorry, I couldn't get, to get your over. your blood pressure up too much. Uh, I was hoping <laughs> you'd have a you'd have a drink with me. <laughs> a celebratory drink. Uh, we'll do yeah, that. I next have time. bourbon in the house. It's not here long. It usually gets drank. So. We'll do that next time, and I think I think what we're planning on doing is making this like a monthly thing, Leadheads, with Derek and Munitions Law. And if this is something you guys would like to like us to do, you know, once a month, I don't know when you know we do it first of the month, end of the month, something like that. We may just do it different intervals, just whatever, because you're a busy man. Uh, so whenever we yeah. can we can get you, uh, just update us on all the latest. Uh, gun laws that are being proposed trying to be passed that are coming up maybe things that we should be looking for uh, and that we need to interpret so we'll get the gun lawyer Derek DeBross with munitions law on and answer your questions yeah and I could probably bring some colleagues from time to time and that would be fun that would yeah. be good yeah and we were thinking about a name to call it we were talking about that too that's right. So if we did have a segment like that, Leadheads, what would be a, a good name uh, for that? I'm thinking the the gun lawyer, something along those lines, like outlaw, call it. I like the law dog. Law don't go around here. Law dog. <laughs> oh, dog. Bringing out the law. <laughs> the outlaw. Bringing out the law. Painting out the law. Yeah, I don't know. I told you I'm not good with that stuff, but yeah. Yeah, it. I'm like one of those that I'll sit there and think about it, and then I'll quit thinking about it, and I'll be like eating dinner, or I'll be out with some friends, and it'll hit me. You know, something will hit yeah. me. That's what it's got to be. Well, we should uh, discuss the law over some bourbon next time. That might be a little more fun. I think that's what we need to do. But um, leadheads, talkingled at gmail.com, shoot me an email, and uh, let me know your interest level in doing a legal um, segment, legal show with Derek and, um, you know, asking, of course, taking your questions like we normally do and then answering your questions. Uh, and, and I apologize because this was kind of a short notice show. Uh, I normally will make a post and get our listeners to, to post questions. So I didn't have an opportunity to do that in time for this episode. Um, but I know that, uh, last episode we had a ton of questions, so, um, there's no telling what kind of questions we'll get, but We'll do that too. We'll set that up, and maybe, maybe Derek, we'll do like a live thing. 
Yeah, that'd be great. If you, get, if you have the ability to do that, I've always wanted to do that. It's difficult yeah. for me to do on YouTube. No, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely can can do a live uh, thing. Maybe we do do a couple on air, and then we'll do a few live or something like that. Like before we start recording. Sure. We'll get on and we'll answer a few live questions um, before we start. Sure. I think that would be that would be pretty good. Uh, I've done radio shows like that before. It's always enjoyable. Yeah. So uh, we got some good ideas floating around for this segment. Um, but I always like hearing from you leadheads, talkinglead at gmail.com, shoot me an email, uh, and then, of course, put in the subject what it is. Otherwise, I may just think it's spam and delete it. Uh, but I do read your emails. I read every email that you guys send me. I may not respond every time, uh, but I do read all the emails, and I appreciate uh, you leadheads sending me um, all the support emails that you send me about how much you enjoy the shows and suggestions for guests and topics and things like that i love hearing that um our last one that we did uh, Derek, we had the ak corner talking about ak corner mm -hmm. we did an epic battle the ak versus the ar uh and we had two teams three three guys on each team and uh it was a battle royale man and it uh, it was a good time we had fun it was funny of course we had your buddy curtis on yeah curtis house from vso gun channel he is just a a wealth of knowledge, man. Once he gets talking about something and focused in and zeroed in on it, man, he oh, gets, yeah. he can deep he's, dive on anything. He's a smart engineer. I, that guy's just a brilliant person. Yeah, and you put him with Brian Keeney and uh, James Balzac and uh, Jeremy Gresham and uh, the AR-15 podcast guys. It was a good time. We had a really, really, really good time. And – uh, Jeremy Gresham with IWI made the announcement that we're going to be giving away a Galil Ace, hmm. possibly chambered in 5.56 at NRA. Okay. So, I'll be there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we asked you leadheads to send in suggestions on how we should maybe go about giving that away. What would be a good, fun, um, fair way to give that away? So shoot me suggestions on that also, talkinglet at gmail.com. That's coming up September, like, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, something like that. Uh, first part of September. And um, we're going to do something, but you're going to have to work for it. I mean, this is a Galil Ace, guys. It's like a $2,000 rifle or, or something. I don't know. They're ridiculous, but... We've had a couple of you lead heads that have sent some suggestions in. I'm going to read one just to give you an example. So this is uh, Troy STX. And he says, I'm not sure if I'll make it to NRA this year or not. It will all depend on family and their schedule. But I did have an idea on the new giveaway. Which is really rough and hard to prove what's legit or not, but the general concept could be summed up as listeners get one entry for every new listener they bring to the show, plus an entry for the new listener. This is by form, email, or such, and I guess by honor system unless there's a better way. A new listener provides a piece of information given out late in this in a show. Their name and the name of the listener who got them uh, to start listening. Maybe I'm naive about how people can be honest or game the system, but it was an idea that came to mind. Trust me, if the system can be gamed, <laughs> people will cheat line steal for a Galil Ace. <laughs> I think you should just give it to me. Just be done with it. We'll <laughs> give, give it to Derek. Happy birthday. <laughs> I that mean, good hey, plan. Derek, if that's what the leadheads vote for, that's what we'll do. <laughs> yeah, some, some attorney's going to get this gun. That's not going to happen. <laughs> we, do, we do majority rules here for the most part. Uh, I've only really overturned one uh, decision, but that's okay. It happens. It happens, you know. Um, but, yeah, so there's an example of a suggestion on how we might give away the um, the Galil Ace at NRA. You got other ideas, other suggestions, send them to me, talking at gmail.com, put in the subject, 
a Galil giveaway idea, something along those lines, so I'll know what that is. So I can categorize it. Uh, but definitely, if you've got some ideas uh, for what we should name the segment with Derek that we're going to do each month, uh, I would love to hear your ideas. And you can send those talking at gmail.com. And if we pick one of your ideas, then I'm going to have a really super cool prize for the winner. I don't know what that will be yet, but it's going to be something really cool. Do I still have you there? Yeah. Okay. There's, you like you froze up. You're just standing. No, I'm, thinking, I'm trying to think of a really cool idea so I can get the really cool prize. <laughs> Everybody's eligible. So <laughs> uh, send those ideas in. But in the meantime, make sure you go and show love to all our sponsors of the show. Nemo Arms. Nemo Arms has a slew of awesome firearms. So go to their website. NemoArms.com, and I'm going to pull it up right now just to see if there's anything new uh, that I've missed. Um, but I really like their shotguns. If you've not checked out their NX shotguns, uh, you got to check those things out. They're heirloom quality. They're beautiful shotguns, over under shotguns. You're really going to like those. Uh, Nemo Arms are the people who brought to market the very first 300 Win Mag AR. So that's kind of their claim to fame. And I tell you, their products are top notch, first rate, worth every penny. Uh, they do the rifles, they do the shotguns, they do cans, they make suppressors, and they do uh, handguns. They've got pistols also. So, a little bit, anything, everything you need there at Nemo Arms, go check them out. And then you can use the code TL10. And you're going to get 10% off that's including their firearms, anything on their website, as long as it's not like on sale or clearance or something like that, which I doubt they have anything uh, clearanced <laughs> at all on their website. Um, but again, these are first rate, top notch quality firearms. And I mean, don't go on there and think you're going to be getting uh, a rifle for, you know, under a $1,000 because they, their quality of these is is just well beyond that. Their handguards alone would be a thousand dollars. So check them out, NemoArms.com, and use that code TL10. Uh, and then Derek and I were talking off air a little bit. Where last episode he let us know that he was a, a Lumens lunatic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's into the flashlights, and uh, I was able to hook him up with our buddy. Um, over at ASP, Michael Hess, and Michael sent him, uh, I think it was, you said the, the bigger one, right? The Raptor, I think. The Raptor, yeah, this one. This yeah. one, it's like 2,000 yeah. lumens or something. I was impressed with it, it really was. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. And what's great about them is they're dual fuel, so they've got rechargeable batteries, mm -hmm. uh, and you just uh, pop in the the USB chargers and it's just your regular Android uh, USB that will go in there and you can charge them up and the charge lasts a really long time. Uh, I think this one I've had for, I haven't charged it in over like three weeks. You know what I like about those lights, Marty, is that uh, everything on that light is well thought out. And tell me, tell me what you, because you're probably more into flashlights than me. I just like the ergonomics of it, the feel. It fits really good in the palm of my hand. It's really mm -hmm. quick to activate. You know, it's got the uh, the uh, two clicks. Right. And I can program that to be a blue light, a yep. flat light, a dim light, a red light, or a green light. Yeah, I like my flashlights pretty simple. I don't like the flash and all that stuff. Um, I like the clip on it a lot after he explained everything to me on that. And I actually, I wasn't sure about it, but how you turn it on was a little bit different. But when he explained to me why it was designed that way, mm -hmm. it, it just, like they thought about every little thing on it. And it was, it was really interesting. Yeah, so ASP's, you know, known for their law enforcement uh, gear. And that's really who they have in mind. So they make their, their products really sturdy, really rugged, 
durable. You know, mm-hmm. it's stuff's built to last, high quality. Um, and then, like you said, there are there are features on this thing that I probably didn't even know that uh, are on here. Um, but this is just, you know, this is one. They've got others that, like you said, you know, that just do the lights if that's all you want. Yeah. Uh, but they've got the programmable ones, uh, the different lumens, different sizes. I think I've got one of the small ones, the Garda, in my pocket here. Let's see. Yep. So this is my EDC. It's the Garda. And it's really small, compact, but it's bright. Yeah. I don't know exactly how many lumens that is, but it's bright. But it's a dual fuel also. So um, I can use just regular normal batteries. Uh, I can use the rechargeable batteries and then just charge it up and go, which is what I've done with all these. I've probably, I've probably on 10 cycles on this one so far, and it's still running great on the, on the recharging. But you just pop it off, and uh, you charge that one in. Yeah. If you're in your car, just like you charge your cell phone, you charge your light up. And then you said you got one. It's called the Scribe. Yeah, I got that pen light. He sent me a pen light as well. Pen light's a little longer. Yeah, a little longer one. Yeah, I use it for my briefcase. Yeah, I had given that to one of my family members. They've been using it. Uh, and then of course they've got red guns at ASP. So you want to practice your your reloads, your mag changes. Uh, they've got the red guns. I mean, you probably heard of the blue gun. Well, they've got the red guns at uh, ASP USA and they've got all kinds of different models there. They don't have any Glocks, uh, but they got pretty much everything else. Uh, Berettas, SIGs, uh, they've got those. They've got rifles. I've got one of their AR-15 red guns. It's got an adjustable stock on it or the different lengths of pull. <laughs> <laughs> Mag change and they, they come with two mags too. Uh, so you can practice your reloads on your AR. It's got the rails, so you can mount your lights, your different uh, accessories that you normally use, your scope, if you have a scope, red dot, whatever it may be, a laser. Uh, and you can set it up just like your AR, practice your drills safely at home. Uh, the magazines that come are, are inert, so there's no way a bullet's going to get in there um, as you're practicing. It will take real mags, too. I just I tried it out. And it will take real mags. There's a mag pull. It takes it. So uh, if you need more mags to practice with than what they send you, uh, here's one. I've got some some fake bullets in. This is a metal. I think this is a uh, – who makes this one? I don't know. It fits in there, though. So check them out, ASP USA. You go to my website. Uh, I've got a link on the front page. Uh, it's, um, let me just pull it up here. So it's easier if I show you guys, I'm going to share my screen, Derek. All right. So you go to talking leads, what website, talkingled.com. Uh, you go to lead quarters. If it doesn't automatically take you to, uh, our front page right. and this is our front page. It'll have our latest episodes, some past episodes that you can go and listen to. Uh, and, and no, I didn't have Keanu on. I had Taryn, <laughs> had Taryn Butler on. <laughs> but right down below that, Armament Systems and Procedures, and any of these links you click on, uh, that'll take you to their website. And if it's, um, let me just click on it. It'll take you there, and then you can shop any of their products from here. Put them in your cart. When you go to checkout, use the code leadhead it's all caps leadhead and that's how you're going to get that 15 percent off that you saw right here so you got to use this link and then when you check out use the code leadhead all caps you get 15 uh, percent off in your purchase as long as it's not already marked down um and i get a little cheddar from that i'm, I'm going to be straight up honest with you guys um this is like an affiliate program that i'm trying out with them and um so we'll see how it works out but you got to go there you have to use that link and you have to use that code otherwise i get buckus so <laughs> uh but you're not going to be disappointed they've got a lot of stuff they got handcuffs they've got the batons i was showing you the baton earlier 
This is like one of their new smaller compact. This is like a good EDC uh, baton. And uh, it's got the button up top. Derek was talking about how you normally would have to hit them really hard on the ground. But this one's got the button and you just uh, you pop it in. And it's got those good retention clips like you're talking about, like they do on their flashlights. They have them on these as well. Nice. Get them on that. And ASP even has, uh, they've got pepper spray too. Um, so go check them out. You're not going to be disappointed, especially in their flashlights. I mean, I've been using the crap out of their flashlights. There's a flashlight there for everybody, every size, every use uh, of the flashlights. Uh, and then, of course, Caltech Weapons. Go show them love. The official lead quarters at NRA. Hopefully, Derek and his crew will be coming by. Um, I'm not. If you guys need a place to crash or set up and hang out, come by Caltech booth and uh, hang out with us, Derek. You never know who's going to be there. It's always a surprise. Do you, do you, Marty, you have the booth number yet? Don't have the booth number, but it'll be easy to find. Okay. Yeah. Caltech's always uh, easy to find, and they usually have everybody in the same spots, you know, typically mm -hmm. depending on the, the geography of the of the floor, but typically everybody's usually, you know, Caltech's here, Century's here, Buck's here, uh, kind of deal, but. Uh, we, we will be, it's where the crowds will be, Derek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I think I know where Celtic, Celtic's usually kind of back in the corner, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't know if that's shot show or if that's. I might be know. getting confused. Yeah. I think it might be shot show now I think of it. I haven't been in the NRA in a couple of years. But they're going to have the new logo. You see there, Celtic 30, uh, logo, 30 years of Celtic. They're celebrating their 30 years. So. Uh, three times longer than Talking Lead. Hmm. I've got 400 more episodes than they've got. <laughs> 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 but they do. They make some great guns, innovative guns. The uh, the RDBs, you know, the bullpup designs. I really like the bullpups. Their shotguns, the KSG, KS7. Uh, and then my favorite, probably my all-time favorite gun of, of any gun of, of guns that have made, that are made, is the Sub-2000. You familiar with the Sub 2000? I own two Gen 1s. Yeah, so love the the Sub 2000, the 9 millimeter uh, in the 9. I had a 40 at one time. I sold mine. Yeah, I got rid of it. I, I traded mine for some body armor. Long I time. couldn't find magazines that fit that Gen 1 in the 40, Smith & Wesson. Couldn't find them. Oh, the Smith & Wesson? Couldn't find them. I yeah. looked everywhere. I've got the, uh, the Glock one. So. Yeah, I got a Glock 9. Got a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. Back there. Oh, one's over there. Um, I've got it all tricked out with a, a red line precision uh, front rail. You seen those? I have, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's pretty sweet. Uh, but go check out Caltech. Uh, in the meantime, the social meds. I don't know how much you're excited about them hosting uh, Talking Lead at NRA 2021. We're excited about it. I'm just glad everybody's opening up and starting to do stuff again. Yeah. Get out, nice. get out of the lead quarters here. Uh, and then SEAL 1, uh, lead head code 25% off for all your uh, gun cleaning needs. Clean, lube, protect, SEAL 1.net. Lead head is the code. 25% off is what you're going to get. Mission First Tactical, the code is lead head. You're going to get 20% off. Factory 47. Uh, I'm not wearing the Factory 47 shirt today, but we've got this logo that they're doing on T-shirts, hoodies, and leddies. I don't have my leddy here either, but we've got those. You can go to Factory 47. Leadhead is the code there. You get 10% off. Uh, and then 1776 United, who makes these logos, our, our classic logos. They make these patches, Leadhead Brigade patches. they got Leadhead Brigade T-shirts. Talking lead is the code that you use there, and you get 20% off 1776 United. And that's on any of their products. That's not just the talking lead logoed stuff. Are you familiar with 1776 United? What's that? Are you familiar with 1776 United? I've apparel? heard of them. Yeah, I've heard of the company, yeah. Yeah, they make some really cool uh, apparel and accessories, the you know, kind of the 2A lifestyle kind of stuff. Really cool. 
Shirts are super soft. Love them there. Uh, but yeah, guys, make sure you go and and support all those. Show them your love. Let them know how much you appreciate them. Buy their products. That's how we uh, keep the show going. That's why we're ten years into it, four hundred episodes into it, uh, and that's a lot of thanks to you, Leadheads, as well. Appreciate all the support over the years, and look forward to four hundred more episodes uh, with you, Leadheads, and our guest as well. Always go and and let our guests know how much you appreciate them. So go to Munitions Group. They've got a great YouTube channel. Am I still sharing my screen? Yeah. So here's here's their YouTube channel. And you can see Derek there. And, and this is the right one, right? I want to make yep, sure. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So here they are. You got home. Here's their videos. Got a lot of videos. How long have you been doing this? I had a I had a I teach law at the law school. I had a student tell me the other day that he grew up watching my videos. Made me feel old. <laughs> I think I the first videos actually were spliced from an old DVD that I used to sell for concealed carry instructors. So technically probably 10, 10 about as long as you. you know, 10, 11 years I've been making videos. Nice. So you were on gun gripes? Uh, that's my law partner, Clay. Clay was on with him. Clay is a friend of his, and he's a friend of the firm. I've met him once or twice. Nice guy. And so Clay, my law partner, uh, did a couple videos with him. They're very good. You should watch them. Yeah, we'll watch those. Um, Eric's been on the show several times. Yeah, he's good people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there, there it is right there. Uh, gifting a firearm to your children. Uh, what is Biden's executive actions on gun control? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, some good stuff there. Go check them out. Munitions law group. And it's, um, that's the logo we were talking about there with a the star earlier. I got a video, a couple down on my honeymoon was in New Zealand. I actually interviewed a gentleman who's a competitive shooter in New Zealand right there. Right here. So yeah, we talked about the New Zealand massacre and stuff. It's pretty interesting. So you just made me some money by clicking on that. Thank you. Does that give you money just by clicking on it? I get I get I get paid every month because it's monetized. So I don't make a lot. It's it's very little. So I'm playing it right now. Yeah, that's Marty. Can you hear it? I cannot, but you, you watch and you, you know when you get some time. It's it's interesting. Just the the different perspective on guns, even from a pro gun person in another country. Oh, you'll shit. drink with him, but you won't drink with me. <laughs> uh, I brought him. I actually had brought him some bullet bourbon uh, as a gift. Oh, I like bullet bourbon. Yeah, I like bullet. Yeah, yeah, bullet's good. So, hey, his name's Marty. I'm Marty. He can't be all that bad. <laughs> Marty Cavanaugh. Yeah. Very nice. And that's well, in New Zealand, huh? That's in New Zealand. It's his backyard. Yeah. Very cool. So there you go, guys. Go check it out. Uh, Munitions Law, Derek DeBross. Um, and then Instagram, I think I got you pulled up on Instagram too somewhere here. Yeah, I haven't looked at that. It's been a little while. Yeah, and there's their Instagram right here. Yeah. Yeah, you need to make a new post. That's an old post right there. Yeah, that was probably Veterans Day. Is like, that yeah, you? That's me. You <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 10 years old. You never got called Opie, did you? Uh, I don't think I ever got, eh, maybe once or twice. I don't really recall it too much. There's that baby face you got going there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. Yeah. I mean, look at those old, those old DCUs. They don't even use those anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, 2005 says right there. Yeah. yeah. Long time ago. Well, all right, Derek. Um, again, I'm sorry to to make you work on your birthday, man, but I know the Leadheads greatly appreciate it. Leadheads, if you have questions, uh, if something we were discussing here, you were just kind of like, mm, you're not really addressing that, uh, hit Derek up, Munitions uh, Group right here on Instagram. Um, I guess they can go to the website. Here's the website. Yeah, there's a, um, if they send questions into the website, it goes into a, ca a queue and we try to get to them as much as we can. I can't promise we answer them, but yeah. You have a little shot if you submit one, then don't submit one. What about on YouTube? Do you get those if people do yeah. put them on We there? aggregate the comments and it goes into a queue. We use the air table, so everything goes into the air table. When I make my videos, I read through them. I have a lot of repeat questions, so you, you just have to look on the YouTube channel. I probably have addressed it in some 
manner before. Right. Uh, so make sure you look through the channel as well. Or just shoot me an email, talkingletgmail.com, and I'll forward it on to him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Either way, but again, each and every month, save your questions each and every month. When we make that post asking for your questions, post them then, uh, and then we'll go over them on the show and uh, maybe during our live session. That we did. Yeah. So. All right, buddy. Happy birthday. And, Appreciate uh, all the ladies for having me on. I owe you, owe you uh, a nice, tasty bourbon next time I see you. All right. Houston. For your, for your birthday in Houston. We're going to be there. All right. You remember our sign off? Yeah. I, I, well, what am I supposed to say? I can't remember this. So I'll say, and as always, leadheads, keep your loved ones close. And you'll say, and your firearms closer. And well, don't be an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lead heads, that does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Again, I can't thank you enough uh, for all the support in keeping the show going these past 10 years and for 400 episodes. I greatly appreciate you, lead heads. The Lead Head Brigade rules. Until then, as always, keep your loved ones close. Firearms closer. And send me your comments at munitionsgroup.com. Perfect. That'll work.